Hello, hey, and welcome to the 99th, 98th, dang it, run it back. Hi, hello, hey, and welcome to the 98th, the penultimate, penultimate episode of the pre, Rush, the pre, 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 pre penultimate, pre penultimate episode of Rushed Vibes. I am Jessica Rushed Vibes Rushing, accompanied by David Rushed Vibes Rushing. And we are vibing before 10 p.m. What time is it? 9.06. It's not even 9.30 yet? It's 9.06. Yo, I might be able to get a cigar in the night. Of course. And you might actually be able to go back to work. No, I'm not, you, I'm not doing it. I'll no. just get back on Thursday. So you just go to bed. That's what you need to do because you got that got that big trip coming up. I do. And I am And you know everything still sick. goes crazy before you take a trip. Like you're already sick. Luckily the kids are okay. But you know, you're gonna get that one work Look, assignment tomorrow. I'm not Katie, doing that. Katie's gonna be like, Jess, I'm not I, doing I that. need this. I'm like, I'm not doing it. Because I don't even know how I got through to... That's the, okay, so that's the crazy thing about this week. It was a short week. So. No, that's right. You didn't work Monday. No, I had Monday like, off. Tuesday was... Like us other hardworking Americans. <laughs> Tuesday was so intense. Tuesday felt like two days. Tuesday felt like Monday and Tuesday. Because it was. But it was like... But it still felt like Monday. Like it had felt like I had already experienced so much. And it was the first day of a short week. Yep. Um, so there was that. And then there was today. Today was more manageable than I think I thought it out in my head, but it was still mm. a lot. It was a, it wasn't, it was just a lot on a Wednesday and I was feeling sicker than I was. And I had like just a ton of things to do. I had a project I had procrastinated for not really. It was, only I only procrastinated because I didn't have a full grasp mm. of what the ask was. I couldn't get a consistent like confirmation of this was the ask. And then I had to do a client training and I was out and I was trying to get home in time to do the training. And of course, everybody like if you don't have anywhere to be. Stay home. This is a public service announcement. Like if you can't even drive the the 45 mile an hour speed limit because you're not in a rush to go anywhere or come from anywhere stay home are you gatekeeping the roads the roads yes my tax dollars contribute to the road so i'm allowed to have an opinion Is, some of us have places to be so that's that's a word i hope we leave in like q1 2024 Gatekeep? gatekeeping because everybody really use that word i know not not we as in us i'm okay. just saying i only use it as, in terms of like sales like okay identify who the gatekeeper is as yeah. the decision maker but i need us as a society to leave it behind i mean they're still holding on to woke they're gonna hold on to gatekeepers eventually the gatekeepers are going to be woke we won't say the w word on <laughs> so like i'm just trying to get home I get my Zoom's not working because IT like did something to Zoom. So like if you sent out a Zoom invitation before IT had done whatever they did, it made your invitation invalid. So mm. then I had to create a new Zoom, share the link in the invitation, hopes that people read it. And, you know, corporate people don't actually read things. So there's a chance like I'm going to get emails tomorrow talking about we joined the Zoom and no, it wouldn't work, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, I updated the invitation and I put the new Zoom, but whatever. Um, but still been congested, procrastinated, had my meeting after that, immediately after that training, um, meeting lasted an hour, but I, I had to create a syllabus, never created a syllabus before. I'm not an educator. I'm a trainer. I've trained. I'm a corporate trainer, but I haven't had to train. I am. Mm -hmm. I was a trainer before you were a trainer. I'm, I, I've never you heard you. I've with, never heard you refer to yourself as a trainer. I've, I've been, mm -hmm. I've been doing that lately because one, probably 30% of my current job is training on a system, uh, training people how to use it when new people aren't like teaching. I, I guess I'm, I'm training. Um, so we're trying to do more in-person training. So I kind of put my, you know, my name in the hat, like, Hey, I'm like, this is what I do. Mm -hmm. 
and people know that I'm good at what I do. Like my boss makes it very clear. Like she hates when she has to fill in for me on a training. Cause she's like, I don't do it like Jess. Right. Um, so, but I've never built like the syllabus. I'm more so the person who it's like, okay, we're going to teach you how to use it. Here's the deck. This is what you're going to like go through it. Does not need anything added to it? All right. But they were like, build a syllabus. I'm like, this is not college. I don't, what, 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 what am I supposed to do? So I kept putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. The meeting was at three 30 today at three 27. I finished, <laughs> I finished my syllabus. <clears throat> Of course, my boss was like, make sure you send it before so we can all review it. And I was like, nah. So I I, I missed that message. Hopefully she doesn't watch this podcast um, because I she has sent a bunch of messages back to back. So I did over. I saw it, but then I was responding to other things. So I overlooked. I didn't share it, but I did share my screen when I presented. Yeah, yeah, no flip it. <laughs> I shared my screen and I presented and I did. I, I did great. I got complimented. Apparently, like I'm very particular with the sides of myself that certain co-workers or associates um colleagues of mine get to interact with mm -hmm. so there's like a very unintentional humorous side of me that i like I'll, I'll give that to katie i usually give it to like my black colleagues um <laughs> but i don't give it to everybody right just because you know there's a certain you know persona i'm trying to to carry at work but a couple weeks ago we had a meeting and one of our account directors was on it. And I, I think I must've been on meds or something, but I was real candid. I was even apologizing. I'm like, y'all are getting a side of me that like only Katie usually gets to see. So, um, like, I think I accused one of this event staff of like catfishing us. And I was like, yeah, I said, I said, you know, cause in every picture she looked like a different person. So I was like, you know, she's just trying to be Whitney Houston. She's trying to be, I'm every woman. Like I was just on this tangent and now like this account director is in love with me. <laughs> she's just like, I have seen this new side of Jess and I just like want to experience it all the time. And I'm just like, I guess I should have let this side out sooner, but I'm constantly apologizing. Like I was on a legal call, like with the attorneys for our company. And I'm just like, yeah, you know, these people just showing up catfishing showing up in different outfits showing up with different hair you don't know who they are and i was just like it, it, this is a problem and you know but it wasn't that bad because it was valentine's week so one of the attorneys had like a crown with like hearts and sunglasses with hearts and then she had to make like a legal statement so she took off the heart-shaped glasses but kept like the tiara on which was very obnoxious with balloons and stuff on it and and one of the one of the vps was like was that supposed to like emphasize like the legality of the statement you're making by you know taking off the heart-shaped sunglasses and she was like yes i wanted to make sure you understood mm. how severe it was but i've gone off on a tangent um for quite some time i didn't mean to um this is animated as i've seen you in a few episodes so i I don't mind. Mm -hmm. Clearly, that needed to come out. But I'm glad. I'm glad it did. It's no, good. To, it's good to hear about how your afternoon went. <clears throat> yeah, and it really wasn't that much. And then I took the girls to to ballet. Um, ended up going to Food Lion during ballet because I I just Savi and her little best friend were just sprinting in the little waiting room. And I was like, I'm not going to do this with Sonoma because Sonoma, Savi's class is longer than Sonoma's class. Mm -hmm. So I was like, so we're going to go to Food Lion. And even though we like perused every aisle, we still got back with like 20 minutes to spare. I was like, dang, why uh -huh. is our class so long? Um, but she had breakfast biscuits and, you know, she was good. So simple things, the simple things. And then we came home, cooked dinner, <sighs> dealt with the poop scandal and... We did have a poop scandal. We did. And now everybody. It wasn't that bad, though. It wasn't, but it was just like, whoa. Yeah, because nobody but, smelled it. Hmm? Nobody smelled it. Well, remember, I was like, you smell. But I didn't Yeah, but she could have just farted. Yeah. Parenthood. But anyway, yeah. what's good with you? Is anything good with you? I'm just here, man. I'm just hanging out. Feeling. No agendas? I mean, apparently. <laughs> but no not not really i'm just hanging out i felt this week i've i've felt uh really light as the head of the household as a man husband father black man in america 
I just felt really heavy. Like they feel burdened by a lot. And uh, Monday, you know, the day you had off, I woke up and got ready to work and just felt, just felt free. Yeah. So I've just been, I've been really good all week. Okay. Just focused on uh, when it's time to work, work. And, uh, you know, try to give everybody here the attention and support they need. I'm just rolling with it. You roll on. So I'm done. And so we're, we're getting ready for you to go on your birthday trip. Actually, I'm going to do it like Lex because Lex does hers over her head when she does her peace sign. Shout out to Lex. Mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> I think it's cute that she does it. And I was just on threads and I'll see it, like a, how many pictures she did it in. That's cool. But yeah, oh yeah, Monday was a holiday. I didn't get to talk about it. President's Day. Don't don't care about that part. But I was done, I was done by the way. Huh? I was done by the way. Oh great. Um, I felt it because we're in sync, so that's why I just actually wasn't. But go oh, ahead. Okay. Pencil that. Um, table that. Memo that. Wait on that. Um, but Monday was a holiday, so everybody was off except David. So I had decided. A lot of people don't know, or maybe they do know. I think I've talked about it. I'm very intimidated doing things alone with the girls, all three of them, mainly because of Sonoma, because she scares me. Um, She's itty bitty, but she's a thug. And it's just between human trafficking and creeps and just trying to keep up with everybody and runny noses it's a lot the idea of like going into a public space with you know three small kids um but i was really excited about monday being a holiday and me being off because a lot of times if they're off we're not off um so then it's like now we have the stress of having to work around there being home and needing to be occupied and needing to be fed because they're not, you know, being entertained because they're not at school or doing something, some activity. So I was really excited um, to do something with them, uh, give them a day because, again, you know, we've all been kids, you're off, but your parents are just either not off or they're occupied or they're just not going to do anything with you. So now you're bored and it's like, well, is it even worth having a day off? So ended up finding an indoor, a free indoor play ground. And we went and we played and Sonoma amazed me because she was just, she's the smallest one. There was this loopy slide. She wanted to go down it. None of her sisters wanted to go down. So the first time I I squeezed myself into this playground, I went up there. I had to like sit on an angle to fit through the slide. Pretty sure I got like a burn on my ankle because it got exposed and it was rubbing against the plastic as I was going down. But it was a lot of fun. But I went down with her thinking she'd be spooked and wouldn't want to like do it again. Soon as we came out, that girl like sprinted away from me and was climbing back up. And when I tell you the entire time we were there like two hours Sonoma probably went on that side like 30 times and she was fearless. Like Savi was like, no, I don't want to. She did. She was like, I don't need anyone to go with me. I don't need, like she would wave like when she'd see, cause I was standing in the same spot. So she knew where to look down. She'd wave. She explored a little bit, but she was about that slide. And it was so cool. Like even Solace wouldn't go. Like she didn't, she ended up doing it a few times towards the end. Um, Savi absolutely refused. Like, almost to the point of tears refused. And we were like, nobody's forcing you on the slides, like chill out. But Sonoma was just so brave. And I was like, it's amazing. Like, you know, she's two and she's just fearless. So it was fun seeing their personalities. And then after we went out to eat, um, I don't know if that's the first time I've gone out to eat alone with them. Um, But we got pizza and I think they were, Sonoma was worn out from all the sliding. So, she like she didn't have enough energy to even throw a fit if that was even an option but i don't know it was just fun and then we came home their girlfriends came with us and and they partied sonoma napped through them playing because and she was she had she had exerted a lot of energy but it just i mean as a mom 
and just recognizing that, okay, they're at the stage where I'm comfortable and confident going out with them on my own and, you know, just having a good time and try and wanting to have a good time with them, wanting them to have memories. Like at one point, so I was like, today was a really good day. And that just like really, really touched me because I always sympathize. Like I want to make sure they're, you know, they're having fun. They're not just kids who are cooped up in the house on their iPads all day, but you know, they're doing tangible things and they're doing things with us, not just with us random people or with school. So, um, I did appreciate having the day off, having the day off with them and being able to just like be a kid, be a, be a mom with kids and doing stuff. So, yeah, I think I'm done tangenting <clears throat> for now. You sure? Absolutely not. Okay. Hair's different mm-hmm. than the last time people saw you. I have I have made a lot of declarations for things I will and won't do this year. Oh, declaration, I'm ready. Well, keep, I'm not sharing. I'm not really publicly sharing them. No. Um, but I did say that I was going to give my hair a break this year. So if you are not a black woman, you might know, you might not know. We do have the options of you know, putting our hair in what we call protective styles. So that's styles that don't require heat to them, that don't require constant manipulation. So this is a protective style. So, you know, I'm getting ready to turn 34. I have had inch goals for my hair for years. I almost hit them. And then my hair is really what takes the brunt of my stress. My, you know, when I've, if I go through something it's usually my hair that that deals with it it sheds it falls out <clears throat> after Sonoma was born my hair was just flourishing and thriving and then like whew, life just knocked it down so I'm trying to get it back so I said I'm gonna make the sacrifice and for then like for 35 like I know that by 35 I want to have my hair a certain length um so I'm going to keep it in a protective style for this, for the year. So I have been wanting faux locks and funny story. So I got locks, um, faux locks at the beginning of the year, but they just didn't quite fit me. So I took them out, like threw in a cheap, cause I can do my hair. It's just a lot of work for me to do my hair. And I like, you know, supporting the economy which is really my way of saying I like being lazy and have someone else do it for me. So um, there was a day I had put my purse in this chair and I guess Solace had put her glasses next to him, but the girls were playing. So they put a pillow in front of it. So I couldn't find my purse and Solace couldn't find her glasses. So we, you know, it was a Monday morning. We're trying to get out the door. I'm like, Solace, where are your glasses? I don't know where my glasses are. I left them right here. And, then, and I was like, this is why you're supposed to put them in the case. Cause you know where the case are. You don't know where the glasses are. And if you would put the glasses anyway. So, um, but I know now she sits in the back of the class. So I was concerned that she wouldn't be able to see the board. Cause part of why we got the glasses because she struggles with seeing the board so i'm like tr- trying to find my purse because my wallet's in my purse and i'm like lord can you just let me know where my where i put my darn purse so couldn't find it had to get her to school so i actually like drove dirty um but i came home and something had me move the pillow and of course i moved the pillow there's my purse there are her glasses and i was like if i had just found my wallet before i would have found her glasses but it was it was God, but God. So initially I was like, you know, she can make it a day without her glasses. But I was like, you know what? Let me just take them to the school. So took the little ones to school, pack up the glasses. After I dropped them off, I head up to her school and the receptionist at the school, she was like, okay, just put her name on a post-it, stick it on and we'll, we'll call her down to come and get them. Cool. Um, she happened to have this hairstyle and it was exactly like how I wanted it, but I haven't been able to find a stylist who can do it. So I say, thank you so much for getting her glasses on a side note. I really like your hair. And she was like, Oh, well let me give you the Instagram of the person who did it. So she shows me the Instagram. I didn't even leave the school parking lot. I messaged the girl on, on Instagram and she was like, well, I do house calls. I can come to you. Um, she was like, I'm off Sunday and Monday. I was like, bet. So, Sunday she came over. We Saturday. Were, 
She came over Sunday. But she said she was off Sunday and Monday. Yeah. From her regular job. Oh, okay. I thought you mentioned like that was the day she didn't do hair. No, no, no. So she's off from her regular job. So she braids on her off days. Makes sense. Sunday, Monday. So she came over Sunday. The girls were ridiculous, especially Sonoma. Sonoma was playing Duck, Duck, Goose, but she wasn't saying the goose part. So she was just playing Duck, Duck. So then like she initiated her. So she would like Duck, 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 Duck. She was just hitting everybody. At one point she was hitting her plate of chips saying Duck, Duck. Anyway, so she, she came over Sunday. She did my hair. We were talking. She's actually a bartender. So I like recruited her to the next USBG meeting. So I'm just out here just recruiting people anyway. Um, but I was like, it's so divine. Like if I had not taken the glasses to school, I wouldn't have seen the lady's hair. I wouldn't have complimented her hair and I wouldn't have found you. So all that to say, I have a new hairstyle <laughs> and I really like it. It is really long. Um, it's finally like, it's not as tight so I can manipulate it more so I can put it up and put it in styles. But this is, I usually don't do my hair this long. I think it's down to like my butt. Um, but it's cool. It's like, it kind of fits with this look. I'm going like ripped jeans, boho. It looks good. Thanks. I like it. I like it too. It's gotten a lot of compliments. Like I gave a homeless woman a dollar the other day and she was like, I really like your hair. I was like, thank you. Be blessed. And then the light turned green. Is there anything else you want to talk about, Jess? I'm sorry. I guess. No, I don't. I don't. I don't want you to. I just want to know if there's anything else. Chatty Kathy today. That's that's good. I, I, I enjoy it. I should probably be like a chatty Chelsea. So that it's like. Ch -ch. You need to workshop that. See, anything? I don't know. Okay. I'm done. I'm done. You sure? No. Nothing else on your agenda. But <laughs> <laughs> the only person with an agenda here is you. So, uh, went a little bit longer on our our banter. My banter. <laughs> Jessica's banter. I'm sorry, everybody. Um, but yeah, I had a very interesting Tuesday. Actually, it started Monday night. So for anybody, anybody who's here to hear the the retelling of the Cleveland story, <clears throat> this is where we'll begin. So All-Star Weekend, which we'll talk about later, mm -hmm. was obviously this, this past weekend. So uh, part of the downside of All-Star Weekend, aside from some of the events during All-Star Weekend, is that there's this break between Sunday and when the games resume. So the games don't start until tomorrow, which would be Thursday. So, you know, NBA threads, not dead, but you know, everybody was just kind of doing other things and it's in withdrawal, doing too much <laughs> as, as having these ridiculous uh, conversations or whatever. So there were no games on. So we were just on the couch watching, uh, we watched love is blind and something happened to, to screw. I was scrolling my timeline and something came across. It was like, um, local TV viewership ratings for the league is up 5% coming out all-star break, which is, you know, obviously compared to, to last year. And I thought that was interesting because there've been a lot of conversations about the, the uh, state of the game and is there too much offense, not enough defense, something needs to change, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, local TV viewership is up. So clearly, you know, something's going, going well, at least from a digital sense. But then I was reading and one of the things that got called out were the Cleveland Cavaliers, which um, they're in second place in the East behind the Celtics. They had a 19% drop in their local TV viewership. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. The second best team in the league. Like, why would their, their ratings drop? Clearly there's something else um, at play than you know, fans not watching the game. But I wanted to see what everybody else thought. I kind of figured what it was, but, you know, as part of threads is you have discussions or whatever. So this is like 10 some at night, right? So I just, I type up the post, Cavs second place in the East, yet their their local TV viewers dropped nine, 19%. I tagged the account. 
that uh, posted the original story, I put a screenshot of what I was talking about and I put the, I put the link to the actual article. And then under the post, I pinned my own reply and was like local, um, overall though, across the league, viewership is up 5%. And there were some people who jumped in, which is interesting. It's so random. The posts that get like attention, attention, because I didn't really expect it to be anything. Um, but people were jumping in and they were like, oh yeah, you know, um, uh, Bally sports, which has the rights to a lot of uh, a handful of local team, uh, a handful of the teams, local, um, market, like everybody, they're like universally hated. Like nobody likes them. Is it the same like Bally's gym people or is it? Maybe. A okay. Um, but they have like the Hornets rights. Now they have a deal with spectrum. So if you have spectrum, you can watch the Hornets, but they're not, they don't have a deal with YouTube TV. So that's why we can never, mm. we can never watch them. Um, so there were some conversations going on, but you know, obviously I fell asleep <laughs> while we were watching love is blind. So I got up and, and we went to bed. Um, so Tuesday I wake up, you know, I go to the gym on Tuesday mornings and I'm checking my notifications. And the thing about threads is they obviously notify you. Somebody likes your post if they repost it and then somebody quotes it. So I just happened to see one of the, one of the notifications that popped up on the screen when I opened it was somebody that quoted me and the first, you know, it only shows you a preview. <laughs> so the, the account said, I don't know who quote unquote, yo rush is. And then it said, da, 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 da. So of course my interest is peaked now <laughs> because somebody's not only quoting me and saying they don't know who I am. So I was just like, okay, what's, what's going on? So I opened it up and it was like, I don't know who your rush is, but the Cavs attendance has been, is top 10 and has been for a while or whatever. So maybe they should take their little agendas elsewhere. And so I was, I was looking at it and I'm like, one, it's five fifty five in the morning. So I don't have all my faculties, right? At least the decent ones <laughs> the decent ones are still are still dormant the petty ones are, are up petty petty's always ready right so my petty ones they're cylinders they're they're clicking i'm like one i wasn't talking about attendance in-game attendance and number two how do i have an agenda just by posting something that's that i found interesting that i wanted to have a discussion about So I was like, okay, I cannot respond. You can just let it be whatever. Don't engage. Don't engage. This is a rule. Don't engage. Or I could just, you know. Pew, pew. I could just set the record straight. So I, I'm not a fan of, uh, I won't, if I'm, if I'm trying to, if I'm trying to throw darts or be like petty, I'll never quote somebody and like, talk about them yeah i've never I'll do it i'll do it directly under the post it's just something about quoting quoting somebody and then trying to be snarky so i didn't i didn't really appreciate it it wasn't even the fact that they were like i don't know who you're rushing it's like that's fine like not everybody on threads knows who i am which is perfectly which is perfectly fine like at the end of the day i'm just an account owner so but i was just like nah you're not about to put out here like i got an agenda when when anyone who knows me who interacts with me or really you could have just looked at the replies and saw that I don't have an agenda. So I said, no, I don't have an agenda. I saw a piece that I thought was interesting and I shared it to have a discussion. I said, and this was about television ratings, not attendance. So I said, put your emotions aside next time and try to keep up. That was probably a little bit too much. No, but again, was too but again much. when you put that emotions album cover on that other dude <laughs> that was too much first of all it's carl thomas my bad emotional and that person was being emotional but i, I felt bad about that too um actually no i didn't feel bad about it i was no, like he, i mean he got what was coming to him because that was like the second or third time that they had that person had quoted me and i was just like okay yes. but i didn't i didn't really i just quoted him and put emotional and then left it alone I know most men probably <laughs> might be called emotional, which may have been why I did it, but it's neither here nor there. It's, it's in the past. So, you know, I, I may have 
the whole put your motion aside so you can keep up might have been a bit much. But again, Petty's always ready. So I go, I go work out, you know, pumping iron, doing my thing. Um, and I get done and I see that they respond and they were like, no, it was like, nah, you got called out, do better. So I replied, nah, you obviously didn't read the replies and it shows because in the replies, I'm literally saying it's the issue is there's probably a lot to it, but the bulk of it is probably that Bally sports has the rights and not a lot of people have access either because the service they have, they're not available or, you know, it's too expensive and that I like the calves. And then my man, Matt had chimed in and he was, he was, cause he's from, he's from Ohio. So he's a, he's a Cavs fan. And he was, <laughs> I think I, oh no, I was talking to somebody else. I was like, yeah, I wouldn't live in Cleveland. I said, or anywhere else, because anybody who knows me knows I don't do cold weather. Like I won't live in New York. I won't live in Boston. I won't live anywhere. That's cold more than it's not. Um, and my man Matt chimed in and he was showing us, he was posting pictures of him and his, his adorable little girl um, in different like dope spots in, in, in Ohio. And I was like, yeah, that's great. I'm still not going. Because <laughs> unless, it's, unless it's 65 and up year round, I'm not, I'm not going. Which is a contradiction because it's not even like that here. But it's not there or there. Um, so I decided after I replied, I was going to leave it alone. I'm like, I'm, I'm done with it because I got, I got stuff to do and it's like whatever. So again, I'm, I'm involved with work. I'm really engaged. I'm feeling light. I'm feeling free. Um, but I, I notice I keep getting tagged. Like my notifications keep going off and I keep, and you know, threads will tell you whether somebody just likes something, whether they replied or whether they mentioned, and I just keep seeing mentioned, 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 mentioned. <laughs> so I'm just like, all right, I'll look at this later, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get some work done. And then eventually I look and it's, it's like all of the NBA threads just like swarm dude and was like, yo, you clearly don't know who you were like, yo, you and Sarah hopped in. I think Sarah hopped in first, of course. And she was like, yo, it was his Twitter energy. He wasn't even trying to come at the Cavs like that. And even Matt was like, nah, Rush isn't, that's not what Rush does. Um, and then the guy was like, no, he said he would never live in Cleves, never live in Cleveland. And somebody was like, I would never live somewhere that was <laughs> so, that ever got like sub 50 either. Um, but it was, I mean, everybody jumped in, like Jan jumped in, um, free time jumped in, Sarah jumped in. Mind y'all, I was working. So I did had, I say Jan, Jan jumped in. I had no clue. So many, was going on. so many people, I didn't even know what was going on. Like, I'm like in a meeting or something. And he was just like. And then I got people coming at me on threads. And I was like, what? What are you talking about? And it wasn't until like 6 p.m. That was a lot. That I finally got on. No, it was later than that. I think it was it like was, 8. It went on. Well, the thing about, because the conversation, the interaction happened at like 7 in the morning. But it was like all day. People. Threads, it, it's delayed. And when it shows people stuff. And but the more people commented on it, the more I guess it affects them. So he gives me the update after like everyone goes to bed, and I'm now like reading it, and I'm just like, how did I miss all of this? Like Man. I missed so much. So thank you, Threads, for handling it. Because the last time with oh boy the Golden State Warriors fan, I jumped in. I was like, okay, what you're not gonna do, I can come for him. You can't come for him. So the guy was following me and I guess I, I went so hard he and he unfollowed me and I was like, yeah, watch yourself. Um but this one I didn't even you get to you gonna do nothing. Huh? You ain't gonna do nothing. I went on this one? <laughs> no, the last two. I went I went in pretty I'm hard. just saying you were like, yeah, you better unfollow me. Like you was gonna do something. I might have blocked him. Anyway, dangerous. Anyway, <laughs> um, I appreciate that everybody handled it. Like I, did, I had nothing. Yeah. I, there was. I was so late to the. I'm still late to the game. I think the only thing I did at the end of the night, I was like, all this agenda talk has me thinking about. <laughs> it. So I found a picture of the old school agenda from elementary school. Um, yeah. I think everywhere, at least where I grew up, we called it agendas. I don't know if some people called it planners, but. I just I was like all this agenda talk and then I posted the picture and that was it. I couldn't even get into it. I was like, wow. But now everyone's like, I don't know who. <laughs> That's like the new intro for NBA threads. I don't know who Blank is. Uh, um, but yeah, it was 
it's a beautiful thing. Um, the rallying of the community, but also like people knowing you. And again, this is a community that's been put over the course of nine months now, 10, May nine. Almost. So um, we're, we're, we're knocking on a year, but you know, these are as hard as it is to say, when you boil it down, we are still ultimately strangers to each other when it comes to interpersonal, but we know, but you can know a lot about a person based off of how they communicate. Well, not not only that, but I mean, you and I are, we're here. So like yeah. we kind of open ourselves up yeah, to I anyone who, anyone who watches outside of like, I don't think we're very loose in terms of the kids. Like, I think we talk more about the kids here um, than we do on threads. Like I'm very vague, like about which kid I'm talking about. Like we just mentioned one of the kids names on a thread. <laughs> last week week before so like, we're very vague about like that's probably the one part of our life we're pretty vague about but um you know you these are people like you have not met them your sole interaction with them is through an online platform so the fact that they can know your character and know who you are well enough to be willing to put their own reputations on the line essentially to come to bat for you that that's what is touching to me um and that's that's what i really appreciated because again i missed all of this like you want to talk about the fight has happened you know how everyone's gone home and police show up there. Like you I was, I was the police officer who there, showed up there for me i was not i didn't i didn't know you didn't have my back i did not have your back I didn't know busy, there was a to too be busy had. building campaigns. Building campaigns <laughs> and procrastinating syllabus syllabi. Syllabi. Um I had no but they know you. They know who you are. They know what you stand for. They know they value what you bring to the community. So that's what really touched me. Cause it's like they no one had to do that. One or two people could have just been like, yo, that's not, that's not who Rush is. But mm -hmm. the fact that people are like, okay, what you're not gonna do is bring that Twitter energy here. And two, like, know who you're talking about. Because we all know this guy. You clearly don't. So, right. like, you come correct to us. And three, read the thread. Like, I still I still don't know what the agenda was. I my want, my I, agenda? Yeah, I want to understand what your... <laughs> he tried to say I was talking about the Cavs fan base. Like, that they don't support the team. But if he had read what you posted... Okay. So now, uh, um, uh, Old Girl Booty and uh, Megalulu, they created a, a GIF that says, always read the replies with the little at <laughs> the thread symbol for always. Oh, I gotta go find it. Yeah, it's in there. Uh, but it's true. Now read the replies. But I mean, that just shows where we are as a culture where and why things easily get lost in translation because you don't actually take the time to translate it you're making assumptions based off of a glance as opposed to reading the whole thing um yeah. and i think for this particular instance i'm sure he probably you know he's probably prideful so doesn't really even acknowledge where like he missed the the intention of the thread because you know certain people once you upset them they're they're like they're too in their feelings so you know i don't know that he would even be humble enough to recognize like oh okay now i see where the conversation is coming from because especially he said you got called out um but i think it just shows one we don't read um we jump to conclusions so quickly without actually I think doing we, I think we read we just don't comprehend well no i have to assume he didn't read because even i don't like i don't follow that part of the convert like basketball in terms of like viewership attendance i don't care about that i'm like i'm watching this game if you're not watching it like that's good for you like what game you watch i don't care overall about like percentages and all of those <clears throat> those details like you care about the fundamentals of every part that makes up the sport i'm like did my team win did your team lose that's all i care about yes. so you know even me 
and I, I use myself as an example because again, I'm not top tier in terms of my knowledge, in terms of my comprehension um, of sports and all of the, the fundamentals. But I read that and I was like, oh, you're talking about the number of people who are watching the game. You highlighted it. Or who are, or who are able to. So but, I just I just don't. But another thing, I don't get why people can't just keep scrolling. Yeah, that too. That you don't have to be. Combative. Or just be like, be like, hey, what are you saying? Like, are you saying this or are you saying yeah, that? Like clarification. But to start a fight and just quote some, I've yet to quote someone. But I'm not combative like that. I'm, I've yet to, unless I'm like coming after you. But I've, I'm not to the point where I would quote someone and be like, oh, you're wrong. Or what are you trying to say? Like, no. Um, it just seemed so unnecessary and childish. But that's the well, 21st century for you. You know, what was funny is that the last, the last <laughs> thing I had was because someone thought I was making fun of, fun of their team. Mm-hmm. Um, and there, or, or that, and, and I, I kind of was, but he thought that I that I was doing it like I had ill intentions, or that I only made fun of their team. Which, again, if people take a second to look at my account, all I care about is having a good time and making people laugh. Mm-hmm. Does it always hit? Absolutely not. Um, but I don't have. I enjoy the league. Like I highlight anybody who's doing well. Um, I'll I'll play into the whole like lakers celtics rivalry thing and not try not to say anything nice about the celtics but at the end of the day like if tatum's balling or brown is balling or porzingis is balling i'm gonna give him the props so i think that was that was the thing that caught me so guard. it was like agenda <laughs> it's like what like what agenda it's so dramatic yeah like what agenda too. what agenda could i possibly have on here um agenda yeah, and, I, and then I was just like, no, like you didn't, you didn't read, and you didn't, and and once I told you what my intention was, you didn't try to go and see like mm-hmm. my side of it. You were just like, nah. And I think that was the part that I was like, but I think again, I had, I had decided to wash my hands of it. Um, it just so happens that everybody else woke up. <laughs> It started, it started it started and started seeing us so they were they were chiming in and um i obviously didn't need it to happen right like but i think the fact that it did like i there i was just reading some of the the replies and mentions and i was like so it was it was a lot it was it was very it was very um it was kind. Of, it was kind of moving. It was. It was very moving. Um, and I was like, man, I, I guess like, you know, I guess people do kind of know what I'm about. Mm-hmm. Like, like you said, and it was. It was very reassuring. Although uh, Ezra said, uh, the only person who can make fun of right, him and Freak Town the only person who can dunk on on Rush is us, <laughs> the community. And Ezra was like, yeah. He was like, I can say fuck him, but if somebody else say it. <laughs> but that's actually fact. And it, and it, and it actually is. Because he comes for you. All the time. In every single thing. And it's been so funny. And I can't wait till we speak. By it. And I don't know that it's that it's true. But I know he, he and I had like a filling out process early on because he's a, a Warriors fan. Uh, closet Lakers fan, which he announced on the NBA, NBA Threads podcast. But um, I think he thought I was just like every other Lakers fan um, who exists, you know, just overzealous and ridiculous. And um, But I think as we interacted, and I think he saw me posting like, oh, like Steph just like went off and gave him Steph his props. I think he saw that I was, that I was all right. Because I think he, he even made the comment one time, like, he's like, all right, you all right, you all right. I was like, thanks, man. Appreciate it. But yeah, he absolutely is. Um, can say f me, and it won't it won't be a problem because I know he's I know he's just messing around. But yeah, it was it was crazy. Um, uh, <laughs> it's it's I don't know. It was crazy. It, it it was it was very crazy. But I feel like we get one of these. And I, this was I don't I don't it doesn't always have to be me. 
It, <laughs> it does. does not always have to be me. It, I don't always have to be at the center we're to rally over anybody else. I don't need to be at the center of everything. Like I, I I've had my run. To whom like much somebody is, else can be the main character. To whom much is given. I was like, damn, not a, not again. Again, again. Like people were texting me, deeming me, like, man, what's going on? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> like I went to bed. <laughs> and you know, I went up. to bed. I woke up. This thing was there. I replied to it. I was. I put it away. And then, but everybody else wanted to wanted to make it a thing. But no. Uh, in all sincerity, I appreciate everyone who uh, uh, felt the need to and then spoke up. It was it, like I said. It was it was very moving. No, I, I very much appreciate it. I'm glad that um, I've been who who I've always tried to be, which is just myself, and and that that shines through the avatar of myself on on threads. So, um, as I said in my post yesterday, I just I just appreciate appreciate everybody, um, and yeah, I, I guess he knows who I. <laughs> who I am? He, he definitely who I am. Is. Somebody had made that comment, like he knows who your rush is now. It's like, it's like he's like, dude, really said, I don't know who your rush is, and then like eighty people came out of came out of the were like, we do. I I wonder if if he's able to set he or she. I, it's a he, right? Uh, I guess, if they are really able tell. to set their pride aside and be like, dang, I. I just made this one post and had half the internet come. And you know, had I not had I not replied, probably nobody would have saw it. And I kind of knew that because I know how threads works. So that's why I really struggled. I was like, do I really want to respond to this? Because I didn't know that what happened would happen, but I knew that other, I knew that other people would see it. Mm-hmm. And um, I mean, sometimes you got to take up for yourself. Yeah. No, I think, I, I think absolutely. everybody has that right to take up for themselves, especially on the internet where it's one thing if you Well, here's here's the struggle I have. And I so I'm sorry for cutting you off, but this is a this is a real a real struggle because so much about what we talk about on NBA threads is like, you know, we're so anti the other place and we're not we're not about toxicity and everybody gets along. And I've I've been I've I've beaten that drum. Like when I'm talking to people about it, when I make you know, when I make community oriented posts, if, you know, I'm on a podcast, I'm, I'm saying it. So when I, when I see some, when I see someone trying to take my, my words and my intentions out of context, which really is like somebody trying to insult my character, which mm-hmm. I don't appreciate. I struggle. Cause it's like, mm, am I going to bring, <laughs> cause you know me, I can get, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I can go there. Uh, he could tussle, but I'm like, well, does this unravel everything if it gets out of hand, right? And I feel like I have a responsibility, uh, just to myself mainly. But I mean, I, I guess to not encourage, you know, the kind of stuff that we've we've been so intentional about keeping out, right? So that's why I was it was a real struggle for me, but I was like, "Ah, you know what? I can, I can respond mildly Mm -hmm. (laughs) and still get my point across. Uh, And then if, if, if dude's going to double down, then, you know, it is what it is. Black. Um, And then it was what it was. So that's, 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 that's always my struggle. If, if someone ever comes at me or if I see somebody quoting me, which it doesn't happen very often and a lot of most times i can look at it i can just be like yeah whatever it just it was just six o'clock in the morning (laughs) i think that was really the only difference between this time and like any of the other times that it's happened um it's petty was always ready (laughs) so so that's the cleveland that's the cleveland story i have no agenda i've been to cleveland i have i have no no ill will toward the people of cleveland or the Cavs. um i hope you all get a better uh Mm -hmm situation for your for the Cavs streaming rights so that you don't have to rely on belly sports because it is trash but uh careful someone might say you have an agenda by saying that no i definitely have an agenda against belly sports because they're trash and i would i would not i would 98 percent of the people who know of belly sports who don't work for them 
<laughs> or, I'm sure or the people who work for them or have. aren't related to people who are like when you work for a bad company you you yeah. know you just collect them a check or who aren't you know stockholders or whatever um or shareholders excuse me but no 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 anti-cleveland agenda here so all-star game all-star, all-star weekend all-star weekend asw uh we were here <coughs> not at all not not at all so we can we decided not, in spirit we decided not to uh not to go it's a, it's just a busy it was it was, it was it was it was it would have been we would have had to move mountains yeah the logistics we could have made it happen we, the, we the, could have forced it if, if we really tried but it didn't and i think we're also proponents of not forcing something yeah if it's not going to come vegas together. vegas came together perfectly perfectly uh this would have been like forced forced yeah yeah, yeah. so um and it's cold <laughs> i just i didn't it's snowing and like no and then we had the logistics of three kids yeah um, and i and we, and we don't want to overwhelm the grandparents you got to keep that in the back pocket gotta i don't keep. mind overwhelming the okay. grandparents how did you feel about the all-star events um, as in the televised events. Yeah, because I, I I didn't see any of the other events. Oh, I mean, just... I didn't see activation photos. Yeah, I mean, the people... Like, I know I, I know a lot of beverage people. Um, so there were a lot of brand activations that took place in Indy. Um, and that's the, the fun part about having these type of events. We kind of experience it, you know, being in a NASCAR city whenever there are races. You know, you got Speed Street. You got things that are taking place. So, you know, I did get to see some of the behind the scenes stuff. There were some really good like brunches and just, just different activations. But, um, in terms of the televised portion of all-star weekend, it looked like a great time. Mm. Um, the, I didn't get to see the celebrity game. (coughs) I had, um, what was I doing? I had gone out with the girls to dinner church and we came back and I was just really worn. Um, And so I was like, I'm just going to call it a night. I thought I would be able to watch it during the day Saturday, but for some reason I couldn't find a live stream of it. Um, Even when I went to YouTube, they only had like two minute clips of it. So, and then I realized that Stephen A was one of the, the team captains coaches yeah so i was like never mind i don't care no more uh, i'm not gonna put in as much effort because Stephen a um sorry who was the other coach shannon shay shay it's shannon shannon sharp is his name he was shay shay you don't know him shay shay um, i tell you i saw him at the end season tournament he was like he's big even at a distance i mean you saw him in that cardigan you knew he was big it's a big dude i've never seen him Someone looks so massive in a cardigan. It's a big dude. Um, so, yeah, I didn't get to see the celebrity game, and I really didn't get any highlights or any, and because I was going to bed, I didn't, I wasn't really on threads, so I didn't see, like, a lot of responses. The one thing I did see is, like, people saying, like, I don't know who any of these celebrities are. Yeah, so it's, it's funny, like, because back in my day. Okay, Grandpa. Back when I was a kid. Uh, the all-star game it had like like tv movie celebrities right so like a will smith uh, uh maybe a tier or two below but yeah I'm, I'm i'm pretty sure will smith played in a celebrity game um but you would have like comedian like Eddie, didn't Eddie murphy yeah i mean yeah i mean like people like household names yeah uh or or just outside household names uh, now i think it's in it's a, it's an indication of where the game is going in terms of how it's consumed, you have like a lot of social media influencers, influencers people who make the name for themselves online, not on the small screen, not on the big screen. Um, because I knew I knew a few of them. Uh, I did not know all of them. And, you know, Jennifer Hudson was there. The Did she play? She play? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, she played for a little bit. I know she uh, the, the linebacker for the Cowboys, like he was there. Um, but for the most part, yeah, it was like a lot of small screen. Was Simone and, and Biles' I, husband there? I don't know. Oh. Um, a lot of small screen. I, I don't mean that disrespectfully. Like that's how people kind of talk about. Like you've seen their face. We well, like small screens and like, like 
they're not on like well they're not household names i guess like i guess said. that's more more so in relation to movies and, and tv shows but like you know like online people online personalities um yeah i knew, I knew a few more but i was like man like but so many of the league's fans that are younger they see these people because they're doing the pranks or they're doing like the youtube basketball uh games or videos or clips or whatever so those are celebrities to a huge demographic of of the league now because you know kids are on you know, the younger generations on tiktok and reels and things like that so um i would not expect anyone my age or a lot of people our age and definitely not a lot of people who are older than us to know who those celebrities were but yeah it was just, it was one of the interesting things that i picked up on i was like oh wow like they're starting to pick like the influencers mm -hmm. the influencers are the new celebrities it's kind of crazy when you think about what a celebrity the kind of celebrities that would make up like the older celebrity games back in the day back in my day i think i had seen someone talk about i mean one of the segments that i was watching on saturday because that was like epic laundry folding day and they were talking about how i think there used to be like vintage player day like Mm. games so like older athletes would play a game and i was like that would actually be something that i would like i wonder why it went away um but it would be something i'd love to see come back especially if the celebrity games are making the turn that they're making in terms of like people don't know these people um because i still think there's a an amount of household like celebrities that are like traditional celebrities that are still recognizable by you know all demographics that or a majority of demographics that they could have afforded to to use mm. so again i didn't watch it so i but from what i heard and for, i heard for i saw from enough people that they didn't know who it was so i know i wouldn't know who these people were either um the dunk contest I don't know what I was expecting from the dunk contest. Uh, I wanted more. Oh boy, uh, McClung, he killed it, uh, in my opinion. Uh, I think, you know, I think Jalen did a great job too. And I think there's only so much you can do in a slam dunk, in a dunk contest without like props and flips. Like obviously, you know, we watch halftime shows and they'll have like the guys with the trampolines and they're doing flips and all of that stuff. But, you know, they're pretty much Cirque du Soleil for the team. Um, there's only so much you can do with a dunk, but I found myself being underwhelmed uh, by it. I was just like, I don't know what I want, but I want a little bit more. Um, the All-Star game itself, I don't know. I might have been like the one person on the planet who... Oh, before the All-Star game, how how'd you feel about Steph and Sabrina? I thought, I thought Sabrina was going to take it. I loved the challenge between the two of them. I think it should really open the door for cross gender league activations. I think that the leagues collectively are as a marketing person are missing a huge opportunity to do a W dash NBA all-star weekend that consists of both leagues together i think that mm. could be i don't know that there's a what city it probably have to be houston because i heard it, like it takes you 45 minutes to get from houston to houston so houston might be big enough to handle it but i i don't know why someone i'm sure i'm hoping it's a conversation that's been had but there's absolutely no reason that there should not be a dual all-star co-ed game east versus west i mean you could get real fancy with it and do like an actual wnba versus nba game and i th i'm confident that there are wnba players that could go head to head with nba players um so i think you know just looking from a cross branding perspective i'm like this just seems like a really missed opportunity um but i loved i loved seeing sabrina i love seeing steph i love seeing the number of people men specifically who were rallying behind sabrina um i sabrina go 
she can. And there wasn't any negativity. I was expecting like sexist rhetoric. Um, and I, again, I didn't, I wasn't on Twitter, so I don't know what was being well, said. Smith said she should have shot from the, the women's three point. Oh yeah, they did say that. I ignored that part. Um, and then someone who said Steph gave her a fake hug and I was just like, what, like, what, what do you gain from saying stuff like that? But I, I do appreciate that she did that. And I mean, if it was close, it was close. I give her so much respect and I even give Steph a lot of respect for being open to it. Cause he could have been like, no, I'm not going to go up against a girl, a woman. Like you lose, you lose, like that's his, his credibility. So, or I don't know if credibility is the right word, but that's his reputation on the line. So I did, um, I really did enjoy that part. Um, that was, it would have been nice to maybe even see two, like two of those as opposed to just mm -hmm. the two of them that's do good. that. Yeah. What do you think of it? Step in spring. I enjoyed it. It was uh, everything you said. Um, I, I think it's uh, it was a nice sort of first foray into like really breaking down uh, a lot of the barriers that exist between uh, NBA fans and. WNBA fans and what I mean is like showing that you hear a lot of rhetoric around the women's game like the games are already shorter the ball is smaller um so men are like you know you hear a lot of men say oh they need to lower the rim so that they, they can dunk more so it makes it more exciting um and then there's always there's always a talk about pay disparity mm -hmm. um but I think it it showed that when it comes to skill women are just the professional athletes are professional athletes like Sabrina was she I think her 26 was the most that any of the men had mm -hmm. um, and she shot from the same distance that they shot so uh, you know obviously the 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 the, the I almost called them the Niners <laughs> the Warriors are getting their WNBA team next year um, All-Star Weekend will be in San Francisco next year. So I think this was like obviously a test, but I think it's something that can, can continue and then grow, like you said. And, you know, I, I think it was probably the best event of the night. And uh, I, think, I think it was great. And it was a little exciting because, you know, she came out, she had 26. And I was like, okay, Steph. Yeah. And Steph was missing those. And Steph missed a couple early on. I was like. Steph. I was like, Stephan. Like Wardell. A, okay, sir. <laughs> but no, nah, it was it was great. And uh yeah, I, I think that it was easily the best part of one of the best parts of All Star Weekend. The game, um, I honestly didn't really get to watch watch oh, it. Oh yeah, you didn't. So normally I would just be here on the couch and watching it either with, with you all or among you. Um, cause the, the girls would be running around or whatever, but we were out, we went to, to South End and then we came back and, uh, Trayvon hit me and he was like, yo, hop on, I don't even know what it was called, but basically called uh, playback. I think yeah, it's what it's called. Like, I had the app on my phone. He was like, he was like, hit, he was like, come hop on, which is for anyone who doesn't know what playback is, it's basically when it's like Twitch, you got people on talking about the game, but they're actually watching it. And then you, if you tune in, you can watch it as they're watching it, but we couldn't get the game only like Trayvon and this other dude had, um, and, and no disrespect, I just don't remember his name, had the game in their app, but like everybody else who joined, we couldn't see the game. So we were watching, like I had YouTube TV open to the side and was watching. So it was delayed from what they were saying. I'm like, I was like, what's happening on y'all? It was, was delayed like, for everybody. Cause y'all, they would, y'all would say something. And then I'd be like, yeah. Cause their feed was like, I guess an official feed or whatever but YouTube TV was like 45 seconds behind. Oh. So that's why you had to watch like the app. Like anybody who joined the room technically should have been able to see what we were watching the game okay, with. Okay, I couldn't the, see that. I could only see you guys. Okay. Um, so I, it, it was, it was, it was different. It was cool. Uh, and I was, I was, was honored that, that, that T had asked me to come on. Um, but it was different. 
<laughs> and I didn't really get the, the we were all talking about it and it was just it was just different. So I didn't really get to watch, but apparently I didn't really miss much. No, it was there were like a hundred and sixty, eighty, ninety some threes shot and obviously the the East scored over two hundred points first time ever. Uh, the score at halftime was like eighty nine to hundred and four or something like that. So I mean you know, there's been a lot of talk about the All Star game and how to make it more competitive and you know, I, I don't want to beat a dead horse. Um I think if the players the fans already get to see them eighty two times a year. And granted, you only get them all, you only get the game's top players all together in one weekend once a year. Mm -hmm. But I think the players will decide if and when they decide to play hard. And if collectively they don't want to, then they don't want to. Um, there's a lot that goes into being an NBA player today that maybe didn't always exist. Uh, you think about how many meetings and part you know events and things they have to go to and it's a long season and you're in indiana indianapolis excuse me in indiana it's cold it's snowing it's middle of february mm -hmm. and all you're probably thinking about is those four days you get off after the weekend before the game start maybe probably like three days before you have to fly into wherever you're playing so i mean i get it you want to put it you want to put a decent product out there the guys were just out there kind of like running at a half speed but I don't know. It's kind of what the game's been for a while now. So I uh, I saw all the rhetoric and all the conversations, but I didn't think it was necessary because it's just that's the that's the the players are playing the way that they feel they want to play. Like LeBron wasn't even trying to be there. <laughs> I just feel like he was just he was just doing his you know doing the bare minimum so he could get about it. Or, I felt about it. What about you? Um, I will admittedly state that this was the first All Star game I ever watched. No, oh. I've never watched an All Star. I'm sorry. Game that that was your first one. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I might have been like the point five percent of people who thought this was supposed to be a serious game. Mm. Um, and it took until like the fourth quarter for me to realize like, Oh, y'all are playing, playing like, you're not, you're not, you're not here to play. You're just, you're playing, you're having fun. Um, I watched most of the game with the Harlem Globetrotters theme song whistling in my head because that's how they were playing. I was like, so at what point are they, you know, you're going to get serious. Um, so I'm like going hard, like, yeah, the East, the East, well, and, and it just seemed like nobody else had that same energy. And now I know it's because no one needed to have that same energy because this is not a serious game. Yeah. This is, you know, but coming, I think that gave me an advantage coming from that perspective. I too, I appreciated seeing them have fun. We only really get to see them in the competitive mode. And then, I mean, with this year, you threw in this season, you throw in the in season tournament. So it's like, it was competition on top of competition. You know, they're, they're rivals. You're bringing rivals together to play on a team um against each other it's one thing when you bring rivals together to play on like the olympic team where they're mm -hmm. playing against the world they're playing against each other so yeah. you know i thought it was i hate using the word cute for grown men but i thought it was cute i thought it was nice seeing them jolly um like joke kick yo <coughs> yo kick how do you joke yo yo okay and um uh what's his face his name's not coming to me, but they were having like just the cutest moments. Um, and then like the one moment where they were like passing the ball and the ball never touched the ground. I thought that was cool. So it was just kind of fun to see them be, be free. Like, yeah, we're playing, but it was like a fun scrimmage. Like it, it came off as like a pickup game. So it didn't seem like anyone cared that they were losing or winning. Um, I enjoyed it. Uh, now that I know how to view it, I think next year, I, like I have, I know the expectations to have, as opposed to thinking like, "Yo, we're going hard. The East about to whoop the West." Like, blah blah blah. Like, no, it's not about that. Like, yeah, there's a trophy and all this, but no one actually 
cares. Like they're just doing their obligation. The people voted for them. They're here. They're going to play. They're going to get their days off. Um, the one thing that I didn't appreciate uh, was uh, the booze that Dame got when he was announced MVP. I, I mean, I get it. You know, Halliburton, like, he's great. And it's his hometown. I'm sure people felt that he should have gotten it. But at the end of the day, like, whoever selected as MVP, like, they deserve that moment. Uh, and I feel like that was taken away from him. Um, again, I haven't watched other all-star games with MVP announcements, so I don't know what the response typically is. Like, if there's, like, a chosen favorite and if that person doesn't get it, then people are disappointed. Like, me personally, I would have wanted Tatum to get it. But um, I was like, okay, congrats, Dame. Like, Dame is a pretty hardcore player. So, you know, he deserved it. So I just didn't appreciate that because, you know me, I'm very big about people having their moment. And, you know, he got chosen. They should have let him have his moment. So that was the only thing that I was kind of like, mm, I didn't like, like y'all could have done better. Mm -hmm. But uh, other than that, it was, it was fun. I can't imagine being there. I feel like there's, because I'm not in that, part of marketing anymore where you know you're at the events and you're bouncing around and you're like going all day it looked exhausting it looked and to be exhausting and in the cold is like yeah no thanks but it looked it looked like a tiring week a fulfilling weekend for those who got to go um but also an exhausting weekend like i i'm sure people were very much so worn out um by all the festivities and i'm sure the traffic and and God knows what else, but all-star looked, this all-star got me really excited for future all-stars. And I'm like, when well, are y'all coming back to Charlotte? We're going to be in San Fran next year. Yep. We've already solidified lodging. So with, at this point, it's just about booking flights. Maybe I'll be important enough to get invited. <clears throat> I mean, I'm going anyway. <laughs> so they'll be like, hey, you want to come up? Like, I'm already coming. But, um, yeah, maybe somebody will ask me to be there. I'm sure someone will. Maybe not. I will ask this year. I was waiting for it this year. Shit, me too, girl. <laughs> Shoot. I get that. Didn't get that invitation. That's cool. It's all good. I got some promo invites, but I was just like. I mean, I'm sure if, if we had gone, we could have. Oh, we would have gotten yeah. into a lot. Like like I said, the, the spirited events in themselves, like I was seeing a lot of activations. It's not hard to get into those things. Um, you just got to know a person. I was trying to get into that D-Wade, Chris Paul brunch or party or whatever. That would have been nice. That would have been nice. What? You're, I, I, I know what that look is. I'm sorry. What is that? <laughs> is, that, is that part of the, is that one of the ones that almost made you unfollow Lex? Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, it was just like, at one point I messaged her. I was like, girl, are you okay? <laughs> like, where are you? Because she was just everywhere. Um, yeah. But it was, it was, it was cool. I did have a friend, an old contact colleague. Um she was at one of the brunches Sunday and it looked like a real, it looked like it was a really good time. Um, I don't even need the event. I just look at the, like the swag giveaway and I'm like, dang, they had Stanley cups in their swag giveaway. Mind you, I have a Stanley cup. I have, a say, cup. You've got, you've got, I have all the cups. I have a, you know, a Yeti from, Oh, I saw uh, threads starting to hand out uh, like Scully's. And some of their, their swag that they sent out. I was like, damn, well, I was a little too early. I got a hat that I can't even wear. I can wear I can wear a, a Scully, but I can't wear a hat. I know, because I got a Scully, and it was on your head the other, <laughs> the other day. Or is that a beanie? I don't know that. Beanie, excuse different. me. Not Scully. Toboggan? Um, no, but it, it looked like a good time. I really wish we could have made it to Lex's event. Like that, the the game that, yes. that everyone was at. I was like, yes. one of those. Yeah, shout out to everybody from NBA Threads who, was, who got to link up and, and meet up out Seeing there. And the footage from that, that that was probably like the dinners that everyone, like the meetups that, that happened. It was, it was, it was Wade, 
John, Johnny, Jill, Dan, and uh, Lex, of course, and uh, Thompson, Doc, mm-hmm. Doc Thompson. I think that was everybody who was there. So that that looked like a good time, and it looked like the game was fun. Um, and then everyone had the pink sneakers, and I was like, "All right, fire with the pink shoes." Um, yeah. That so was that was very it was very warming. So that was that was the one. Like every time I would like the big activations are fun. Like, but I've done big activations a dime a dozen. That's not a big deal. But seeing like the community, like the threads community events, I was like, dang, that's really what I wanted to be there for. Um, like to be able to like touch people and be like, that's how tall you are. <laughs> like just those random things. Um, uh, that's, that's where I was just like, dang, I wish we could have been there for that. But you know, the future holds so much. And then I think I also had like this kind of like, there's really nothing left in the season to bring that much excitement because, and one would argue, okay, playoffs and finals, but finals are so inconsistent. It's not like one location that fi- like you, you're switching off. You're going back and forth city to city. You don't know when it's actually going to end. So, you know, you've got that like with the in season tournament, it's an actual scheduled activation with all-star weekend it's an actual scheduled activation there's really nothing after this point outside of just traditional in-season games um so you don't there's not really because it's not like you can be like okay let's all get together for you know finals game four what if there's not a finals game four uh i mean there there is but like what if there's not so you can't really like plan against that so that was the only other thing i was like oh like we got to wait all the way until the next in season tournament to have like Alex actually suggested that the first, the international game, I think she said there might be one in either Mexico city or in London that we should all like plan a bunch of us should plan to go to that. And I was like, I'm aligned with that. You wouldn't go. Mm. Okay. I guess nah, I'll, I'll go. I'll, I guess I'll tell you how it was. I'll go. All right, what's next? Um, I think that should be it. Why? Because Savi is... Because our child is in agony. And then also because there's a large portion of this that we're going to have to cut out that people aren't going to get to see, but it's we've been recording for almost two hours now. That's why, don't we have to fill in the gap for what we have to cut out? It'll still be like an hour and 15 minutes. Okay. An hour and 20. Um, so I'll say this for anyone who, from NBA Threads, who's made it to the end of this, uh, we did not get to your questions this week, but we'll get to them next week. Although pretty much everybody asked about the agenda story. So you got the story. So you got it. You got it early on. But for those of you who asked other ones, uh, we'll, we'll catch them, answer them next week or talk about them. Topics, questions, talk, talk about them next week. Once Jessica gets back from May Eagle. May Eagle. So, uh, for everybody who um, went to All Star Weekend, hope you guys had a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun following along on Threads and, and seeing all the videos and everything and the, and, the, and, the, and the basketball games. We ran it back and all that. It was it was really amazing. Um, to everybody who's new to the channel, uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button, like button, so that it helps the algorithm show us to more people like yourself. Thanks to all the original Vibe Tribe members. We appreciate y'all. And uh, you can find us here on YouTube, obviously, Spotify, Apple, and uh, and Google for any of those of you who like to listen to the audio. So that is our episode for this week. You actually got two Rush Vibes episodes this week because we dropped last week's on Sunday since it's part of the same week. Um, but you're only in one next week. <laughs> so we uh, appreciate you guys so much. Thank you all for watching, tuning in, encouraging uh, we really do appreciate it. And uh, we will see y'all next week. Yep. Peace. Bye. So um, <clears throat> I know this is a little weird. We haven't actually ever done this before. Normally we just in the episode. But I forgot that we were supposed to run a uh, very special song at the end of the episode. So we came back. Before we put the episode up, so our clothes are different, why Jessica looks 
even more vibrant. And, uh, you know, that's why my, I just got my hair cut. So my fade is a little tighter, but, um, one of the NBA threads community members, Jamar, who is a, uh, been recently inducted into the vibe tribe because he comments on every single episode, uh, created a song inspired by the NBA threads community. And it was so dope. It was so far. I've actually mentioned in the hook. So Jess was like, well, I'll let you speak for yourself. I what did you say? Oh, I Jess I was like, play we should play, we should play it at the end of the song. So normally we play Growing Pains uh, by Jay Belk. Shout out to Jay Belk uh, going at the end of every episode. This is a rushed vibes first. We've only ever played Growing Pains at the end of an episode, but we've got so much love for Jamar and all of the good vibes that he brings to the NBA Threads community. We were like, why not show him some love? And let's play the song, uh, especially at the end of the episode that we talked about NBA All Star Weekend. So, Jess, that was the that was it, because Jess knew we were going to talk about All Star Weekend. It was like this would be a perfect fit. So, without further ado, here's the NBA Threads theme song. Hope you all enjoy it. Peace. NBA <laughs> Threads. <laughs> NBA Threads is a community on Threads. Yeah, I know. I was jacking Threads since it came out day one. Mm -hmm. I was putting in the work, trying to meet new people, and I stumbled upon the NBA Threads community. And it's like it's, it's like it's it's not an official community. It's unofficial. Anybody could be a part of NBA Threads, but it's some key people that was there early, putting in the work, building a community. So um, that's what we do, man. We just was. I don't know. We got a state right now where we just trying to grow the community. So. I created a song for the community. So let's go. <laughs> let's go. That's all I did. There okay. was a void and you felt it. Pause. Yeah, I felt it. All right, let's go. <laughs> Yo, man. I just broke up with my girl. It, it's kind of low. She over here like, why are you spending so much time on that weird app? I'm like, like this ain't, this no, ain't no regular, regular app, app, baby. This is NBA Threads. Hey. I'm just chatting hoops with my dogs. Don't be padded. Hey. Had to cut her off. Switchblade on my shed. Hey. It's our time to win. Need a trophy and confetti. Hey. I used to rap the Knicks. Call me Whoopi. Call me. Call me. Call me. Call me. Call me. Call me Eddie. Time to light the beam. Sack town. I hope they ready. Yeah, hey. we both beers. I'm a grizzly. You a Teddy. I'm about to blast off like a rocket. I am Freddy. Hey. Van Fleet. Take a leap. Put my click on. Use the Detroit flow for this. I'm a pissed on A D A R and the boy LeBron won the first cup. Lakers fans, get your sip on. It's game time, game time with my bug sad. You ain't got my money, Drizzy Drake. I get upset. It can get Rocky Colorado like a nugget. Shout out to Tyrese, no Jody here. Bug game threads is the place to be. You ain't heard it from Rush, then you heard it from me. I be balling so much, they think I'm in the league. We ain't going for the twos, cause we going for threes. I'm a maverick when it come to the paper, y'all. I know Jay don't care. Ay, don't. Miami, we can feel the heat like Khaled. Ay, heat like the Suns, Golden State in the clear. Get Cohen in Minnesota, Nas Reed from the crib. The Nets moved to Brooklyn and got New Jersey. Who gon' win the chip? I don't know, it's too early. Fans think the Celtics or the Sixers, but they skirmy. Don't stop believing, trust the process, trust the don't journey. I got that swag, I got that jazz like Utah. Floor seats, Buzz City, tickets from Groupon. WNBA, first pick, who you got? Caitlin Clark. A page B from Yukon. I do magic with the rock, I'm a wizard. Can't forget the rap, this Pelicans and the Spizzers. Watching Shade play the Bulls in OKC. Spider Trey, Caps and Hall, song is complete. NBA Threads is the place to be. You ain't heard it from Rush, do you heard it from me? I be balling so much, they think I'm in the league. We ain't going for the twos, cause we going for three. It's game time, eh? Game time, game time, game time. Uh, I'm John Stark stucking on the baseline. Yeah, Sarah Lewis, you know that's my Kate Nine. Ay, no fake energy, no hate time. Ay, it's game time, game time, game time. Uh, we made a hit, we ain't need a baseline. Yeah, Joey Pleasants, you know that's my Kate Nine. Ay, no fake energy, no hate time. I want to thank everybody from the NBA Threads community who inspired this song. I just hope we continue to spread those positive vibes and unite the world through this game of basketball that we have all come to love and appreciate, you heard? And also, I just got back with my girl, y'all. She get it, y'all. She get it. I just got back with my girl. I love you, baby.